Hey folks, Jesse Bayer here with Abundant Living Ecuador coming to you from our offices in Loja. Uh, today is Wednesday, February 15th. It is uh, just four days before national elections here. The weather has been just exquisite here of late, uh, which has the locals complaining about the heat. Um, I am enjoying every minute of it. Um, anyhow, I just wanted to um, put this video together for you uh, for all you folks out there who are interested in healthy living, um, looking at Ecuador perhaps to uh, you know increase your opportunities for healthy living, obviously a big part of that is food. Um, maybe I'll touch on water as well. But I just want to give you sort of um, an overview of sort of what's available to you, what your options are. If you're looking to be in Ecuador, perhaps you're looking for supplements, you're looking for you know health products. Um, you're also looking potentially for organic food options, um, etc. So I just want to give you um, an overview of that and I'll touch on a couple of other health related matters as well. <clears throat> so let's start with um, supplements. So if you're looking for um, you know, healthy health supplements, herbal supplements, things like that, um, your variety here is certainly going to be less than it would be um, in other places and your costs are going to be a lot higher. Um, and that's because of the import taxes. So Ecuador has very steep import taxes. Um, again, I think I mentioned a minute ago, we've got elections coming up um, on the 19th with a probable runoff on April 2nd. Depending on who gets elected, a lot of those taxes may be going away. I hope so. <laughs> um, but right now you're going to pay a lot of money for anything that's imported. And that certainly Im includes the vast majority of supplements. Um, there was a trade deal recently signed with the EU that's brought some price stabilization to certain uh, certain items, but in general, your imported stuff is still um, pretty expensive. A lot of anything that's made in Ecuador, you know, is going to be similar prices, maybe slightly less to what you're used to. So, you know, things like maca or goji berries or um, chia or you know a host of other stuff is um, available commercially here in Ecuador. You can certainly find it organic as well. Um, and that's, um, you know, normal prices. Um, the other thing too, is that a lot of, um, you know, there's, if you're looking like you're talking just health, like products, supplements, you know, cures, things like that. A lot of the things that, you know, in the States or elsewhere we might buy, um, from a company that makes it here, you know, there's, there's still a lot of sort of indigenous or, you know, old time knowledge of, what cures what so you can actually still hear you know there's an array of uh, uh, plant-based cures which are usually just the plant itself that you prepare in a certain way or whatever to cure basically um, basically anything so that's cool too you, you don't necessarily have to buy the product you can you know just kind of go to the market and pick up the the leaf or the root or you know whatever whatever it is so um, that covers products. Um, I, well, the other thing I should say about products is as far as availability, um, any major population center, most of the things you're going to look for are available. So, you know, Quito for sure, Guayaquil, um, Cuenca, um, you know, and then also anywhere where like a bunch of, a lot of foreigners have settled. So, you know, add Vilcabamba to that list, Cotacachi, um, places like that. You're going to find a lot of those sorts of um, international herbal supplements and health food products um, available. Um, okay, so that covers, you know, products. Now let's talk about food, um, you know, fruits and vegetables, produce. Um, so there's, there's a lot of ways to do your shopping in Ecuador. Obviously, there's, excuse me, plenty of people just go to the supermarket, which there's, you know, totally normal um, supermarkets here, like you'd find anywhere in the world. You can obviously buy all your stuff there. Most of that, of course, is not organic. They do have some amount of organic available. Um, and then another option are the markets. And there's markets that are open all week um, that are indoors. And then there's uh, markets that are uh, usually outdoors or pretty much always outdoors that are um, generally speaking on Sunday. Um, but also uh, there's sometimes market on Saturday. There's even sometimes markets um, during the week, to, again, depending on, on where you are in the country. Those markets carry, the outdoor once a week markets, carry a lot more um, local food. So, you know, that can be a great way to get local food. It also is a decent way to get uh, food that's not sprayed, organic food. Um, 
So let's just talk a little bit about, you know, what's available in regions and figuring out what's organic and what's not. Um, so if you, for example, where I do my food shopping in Loja on Sunday, I go to this huge open air market. Um, it's about, I don't know, four plus blocks of, of um, vendors. Um, much of the produce is local. Some of it's from the coast. A few things get imported like um, a lot of apples. I mean, there's, there's apples in Ecuador as well, but a lot of apples, grapes, um, get imported from Chile. Um, but a lot of it is local and they have organic sections, for example, at the market that I go to. So they have you know, vendors who are specifically designated organic. Um, now, does that mean a hundred percent of what they're selling is organic? Not necessarily. Um, the vast majority of it would be, um, but you know, you, you, so it's, it's not as well defined or well regulated as, um, it might be somewhere else. Um, beyond that, there's lots of people who don't spray, but they don't define themselves that way. So you just take, you have to talk to people. Um, you've got to start, you know, just kind of figure it out how it works, but you can definitely find organic. Um, basically just about anything from the coast is sprayed. Um, obviously anything imported is sprayed, which is very little is imported. Um, and then if you're in the mountains, the Sierra, um, a lot of stuff would be sprayed and some stuff wouldn't. Um, and then if you're talking about food that's from, um, and again, I'm talking about obviously where the food is from, not where you're buying it. But if you're look, talking about food from the Orient, from the Amazonian region, almost nothing is sprayed. And that's just because the climate and the soil are so good, so conducive to growing that nobody sprays because it's unnecessary. So you can pretty much get all your fruits from the Orient and not worry about, um, you know, it being sprayed. They just don't spray um, and then, and then if you're interested in organic, you've got to, um, pick and choose your, your vegetables and find the organic options, etc. Um, the other options of course, are just to buy it directly from an organic farm or an organic grower. There's certainly lots of opportunities like that. And then of course, grow it yourself, which, you know, a lot of people come here to do as well. So I think that covers, um, some of the, or some of the, you know, organic, uh, options as far as where you can buy your groceries, um, what else did I want to touch on? Yeah, I think the last couple of things that I should touch on, um, just health related, are um, first would be uh, fluoride. So a lot of people who are you know into health are aware of some of the risks and dangers of fluoride, which, for example, where I'm from in the U.S. is widely um, added to the drinking water. Well, in most of Latin America, it's put in the salt, and that uh, is true for Ecuador as well. So um, any salt that you, or any, any restaurant you eat in, you, anywhere you eat, um, you're going to have beating salt that's fluoridated. Um, if you're looking to get away from that, um, get away from the fluoridation, you know, there's, there's salt is widely available. That's not fluoridated. For example, the salt that I buy is, um, is, um, basically very similar to Himalayan, uh, pink salt. It comes from Peru, it's a, and it's um, pink as well, and it has very similar characteristics to the Himalayan salt. You can also just buy regular sea salt that's not fluoridated. You can buy um, Peruvian mining mine salt that's not fluoridated. So you can get certainly buy and cook with unfluoridated salt, but any restaurant you eat at is going to be using um, fluoridated salt. The other thing I should mention um, very briefly, and uh, you know, to some I may sound like a quack mentioning this <laughs> to others. They may have no idea what I'm talking about. And yet to a, a, another group, um, you know, they'll want the information. So um, Ecuador, uh, and that's chemtrails, uh, that's surrounding the subject of chemtrails. Ecuador has chemtrails. Um, I think, I think they're everywhere in the world, but Ecuador has chemtrails. Um, for example, on the coast, it's pretty, it's pretty intense. It can be pretty intense. Uh, the, the spraying, um, my theory is that they, they spray a lot over the Pacific Ocean and it kind of rolls in. You get that false cloud cover and, and et cetera. So it can be pretty intense on the coast, obviously not all the time, but a lot of the time. Um, as you get into the mountains, basically there's, there's no chemtrails. And that's not to say that you won't ever, ever see anything. Um, but for the most part, um, you've got blue skies every day. So not a whole lot of... Um, of um, chemtrails at all in, in, the, in the mountains, in the Sierra. And then as you get into the Orient, into the Amazonian region, even less so. So, you know, in general, not, not a panacea for that either, but um, 
but a vast improvement certainly to, for example, New York City where I was living uh, prior to here. So I think that covers it, guys. So, um, oh, water. I should touch on water very briefly. Uh, that could be a long conversation. I don't want to get into it too much. But, um, you know, your quality of water in Ecuador generally is pretty good. Um, your cities and towns obviously treat it. They put chlorine in it, etc. cetera. Um, you know, pretty much like any city or town you'd find in the States minus the fluoride. Um, and then, you know, building a well or as far as if you're, you know, dealing with your own water, you've got some of the best water in the world. So, um, you know, finding a pure water source is, is not difficult. Um, I mean, you can even, a lot of the streams and whatnot, you can even just drink out of here directly. Something I've done many times, you know, looking at properties as long as there's no cows above you uh, and it's just, you know, coming out pure from the mountain. So water, water here can really be um, exceptional if depending on where you live and what property you, you um, what kind of property you buy, etc. So that's it. Um, again, I'm Jesse Bear of Abundant Living Ecuador. Uh, check us out on the web at abecuador.com. Uh, you can email me at jtbayer.com. Bayer is spelled like the aspirin, B-A-Y-E-R. Uh, we have an 800 number from the U.S. and Canada, 888-999-0948. And uh, that should do it. I hope you guys uh, uh, enjoyed this information, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.